Hello everyone, I'm Patrick from Melonhead once again. Um, I really wanted to just kind of talk a bit about like the way we approach working in teams because I think there's a lot of indie teams out there starting up and they're not really um, taught how to kind of work together as much as you know learning how to make games. And so yeah, that's why I decided to talk to Adam about doing a talk. Um, so here's just some little advice that I kind of picked up along the way. Um, bit of background on me, I've always loved designing games, it's just been something I've wanted to do my whole life. I came to an arts course because for some reason I thought that was how you learn game design. But um, it worked out well because we did a lot of like actual game dev projects through that. Um, and so falling into that I kind of really started to like working with teams and kind of like leading groups to get the best results. Um, and after my first Avcon project, I just really wanted to start a studio and kind of get right into it and dive in the deep end. So that's why I'm here. Uh, a little bit of background on my team. Um, we started working on Melonhead Games to do like a Avcon student project. We're working on our game kind of while we're at uni. Um, we had a team of about nine people to start with, and throughout development, kind of people started to you know, realized that it wasn't exactly what they wanted to do at this time. People wanted to specialize in certain things and not work in a broad indie sense. So we kind of condensed down to just the four of us now. And then at the Global Game Jam last year, we started working on Rooftop Renegade. So it was originally like a party platformer hybrid shooter thing. Um, hadn't really thought how to turn it into a full game, but we just liked working on it. So we decided to kind of keep rolling with it. Uh, we managed to get an office at Game Plus almost straight after that. And then we went into full production for Rooftop Renegade. And yeah, I kind of already covered that. Uh, yeah, little disclaimers here. Um, like, these are the ways that I kind of approach things, but they're not necessarily going to work for your team. Some will, some won't, but you know, learn your team as much as you can and kind of see what works for you guys. Um, so first thing when it comes to like working with your team is being able to like get the most out of yourself and um, It's just like coming into work in a really good mood and just feeling positive is gonna make everyone more comfortable around you It's gonna help you work with your team and it's gonna help you stay on top of your own tasks um, And in an indie environment, there's not really like a boss or anything. So if things are kind of slow It's really on you to kind of speed yourself up Obviously, you help each other out, but you've got to make sure that, you know, you know what needs to be done and when. And also just avoiding crunch. Like, crunch sucks. We've done, was it two Avcon crunches now? And uh, Game Jam crunch, well, that is just crunch. So, um, and a few play tests here and there to kind of add to that. So we've, we've breathed it a fair bit, and it's going shorter and shorter each time, but we're still crunching. Uh, so just some simple ideas to kind of help your own workflow get a bit better. Uh, like putting your phone away is really important. I find that a lot of people don't realize just how much time they spend just scrolling at work. And it's really easy to trap to fall into because you know, you're doing a task you don't really want to do and you just start checking what other people are doing and suddenly you're on Twitter and it still feels like research because you're looking at game dev stuff, but it's just avoiding tasks. Um, and when you take breaks, just uh, go outside, get some fresh air, things like that. You know, avoid screens and just give yourself some time to think. A lot of problems can be solved just from taking that time. And when you are working, just uh, a lot of people watch things like streams and, you know, tutorials and stuff like that. That's all good, but just make sure that you're not getting pulled too much away from what you're trying to achieve at the time and really focusing on your actual work. Uh, I use OneNote all the time. OneNote is amazing because um, I have a really terrible memory and I've sort of started to push my team to use I think you're even using it now and you're the like anti-software guy but <laughs> um, so we've all started using that a bit more and it just helps kind of keep track of things if you're a bit bad memory like I am um, and also confidence is really good in your abilities like you always want to be confident that you can achieve something but if you think you can get something done quickly just knock it out of the way get it done as quickly as possible and that way you know, you'll have more time later, or maybe it will take longer than you expected, and then you're not crunching because you've got plenty of time still. Um, so two big ways to spend time at work is reactive and proactive time. 
reactive is you know solving things that come up and proactive is just doing your own tasks and keeping up with everything. Reactive tends to be things like answering emails. That's a big one. So you come into work, you spend a few hours you know, checking up. You know, hopefully a publisher's emailed you or something. That'd be awesome. Um, but that all takes time. And then it's going to take time out of your task list. Um, dealing with inbound issues, like if you get feedback from a playtest and suddenly you're like, I have to redesign my game to fit what these people want. That's going to take a lot of time out of your tasks once again. Um, things like just meetings, helping each other out around the office, and like reviewing other people's work, because in an indie team you really want to try and make sure everyone's got an opinion. Um, that's all stuff that, it, it takes a lot of time and you don't really factor it in when you're planning. So the dangers of that are, when you're dealing with those kind of external situations, um, there's a lot of issues that can be missed, because you're not spending time thinking about your own tasks, you're trying to help everyone else out and you know, help deal with things as they come, so you miss out on some things that would be fairly easy to avoid. Uh, the stress, that's associated with that, um, that disrupts performance a lot. So it's really important that like, you get to the end of the day and you look at your task list and you've achieved enough to, and nothing at all. But you've been working all day, you just haven't been ticking off tasks. Um, and lastly, short-term decisions are rarely better than long-term. So if it's, it's the duct tape principle. If you patch something up as it comes, you might miss a big solution. You might just solve it for now and then it'll pop up later in development. And that's a nightmare, especially with code. Like George spends so much time being like, "Why did I code this?" And I'm like, "Cause you were, you had no sleep, man." <laughs> it was three days into Avcon Crunch. Um, that. All right. So proactive time, on the other hand, that's doing your own work. You know, really just focusing on what you need to do. So there's prioritizing and listing your own tasks, um, working on important tasks that aren't urgent. So things that you know will become a problem if you don't solve them, but they're not like currently disaster worthy. You can you can take your time with them. Um, even just taking time to think is a really good use of time. Like people say you have the best thoughts in the shower. That's because the only time you're not with your phone or music or anything. You just kind of like with your own thoughts. And as much time as you can get to have that outside of just in the shower, preferably when you've got a notepad, it's really useful. Even just walking around the office, going outside, good time to think. Um, and also just looking after yourself, like mental health is obviously really important, especially when you're in those crunch scenarios and that time needs to be taken into consideration. And lastly, uh, research and skill development. So, you know, we can always improve. If you factor that time in, then it's just useful. Um, so a few tips to be more proactive. And so what you want to do is you want to try and balance your proactive and reactive time. So if you can spend like say half a day dealing with stuff as they come and then the other half of the day, you know, doing your own tasks, then that could be a fitting. Like it'll depend on your situation and how much time you have. That's how I like to try and balance my time. Um, you should also make your team aware of your proactive time. So people know like when they shouldn't bother you and when you're doing your own work and when they, you know, can come and ask you questions. So if people know when that time is, then you have a lot less times where you get pulled out of your work. Um, and when other people need help, uh, try leading questions. So if you can get your team to kind of search for their own solutions and find their own ways to solve problems instead of trying to like solve a task that you know less than them about, that's going to be beneficial for everyone. And lastly, it's just uh, make yourself clear to-do lists. It just feels really good. Like Microsoft To-Do has like a little ding. It's the stupidest thing ever, but it's, it feels really good. Um, so, uh, top of that, while you're doing your to-do lists, time estimates. Take how long you think something will take, add 50%. So we've learned very quickly that for us, it's take how long you think, add 50%, and then add 50% on top of the total for that. But that'll depend on how you work and how accurate your estimates are. Um, but making the estimates too long is better than not long enough. Um, and lastly on that, uh, work will be scrapped, like some things don't work, some assets aren't needed. We lost an entire map based on not really knowing what it was going to be, but just making it anyway. Um, but enjoy what you learn from it and take note of how you can like avoid cutting that work in the future, like maybe be more pre-production and things like that usually help. Um, and sometimes people just don't like features, like you can spend ages working on something and trying to make it work in the game, but people just won't enjoy using that mechanic and you can't force people to enjoy something. <laughs> All right, so. Oh. 
So now you're working, now you can work with your team. So first thing you wanna do in an indie team is make sure you've got really aligned goals. I think this one's really key and people tend to miss it and just focus on making the game. But you need to find out what everyone on your team wants out of the studio, like why everyone's here. Um, some people just want to make a single game, some people want to make a studio that's going to last forever. Those need to be worked out early on because you need to work out things like um, revenue share and you know distribution of actual shares and things like that. And that's going to change based on you know how long people want to hang around with the company. And if your goals do align and try to work with people with aligning goals, it's going to help morale. So like we have a lot of the time we're like, oh, we can't wait till we're internationally recognized and like, oh, I can't wait to not see you because I'll be in a different country or something like that. Make jokes like that, and it, it helps. Um, but yeah, so uh, what I really want to talk about is creative, like the way we kind of balance creative freedom in our team. So we're a bit messy with the way we do things, but it kind of helps us come to like more interesting conclusions. So like we really try and make sure everyone has like full input on large game decisions. Like everyone's got their roles, but we want to make sure that everyone feels like they're a part of every decision. You've got like artists talking about design, programmers talking about art, and it just, it's messy, but it helps you get like a lot of different inputs. Um, and that like, we're not the most diverse team in the world. I'm well aware of that, but we do have like very different pasts, the way we are brought up and using those together, like really, Kind of helps us come to those different conclusions when we're coming up with ideas. Um, and lastly, you want to make sure you really encourage role autonomy. Like, if someone has a role, it's because that's what they want to do. That's the role that they um, really kind of gain their experience in. And so you can't tell someone how to do their job if they know more about it than you. So we want to encourage them to be more empowered to kind of have that say over their own role. Um, so to go further with that is you want to make sure you inspire your team to find solutions. So, you know, I'm not going to tell Alex how to make an environment look good. I'll tell him what I think looks good or not, but then it's up to him to come to a conclusion that, you know, works best for other people, even if I don't like it. But giving, like, making sure that everyone has that um, feeling like they can come to their conclusions, I think is fairly important. Uh, another thing is planning time so that everyone can understand each other's roles. Like, you really want to make sure that you know, while you're not going to get the details like programmers and artists, you know, they're not going to know the ins and outs of everything that they need to do, but having that balance, <laughs> you want me to take that? <laughs> um, but making sure there's like a fundamental understanding is, is pretty useful. Uh, and also making sure everyone's still making the same game. Like this is a big one. Like uh, when you kind of, Agile development, you can kind of fall off with your different ideas and suddenly someone thinks you're making a party game, someone thinks you're making a hardcore competitive game and it all gets really messy. Um, so like taking some time to sit down and actually talk about what the game is in your weekly meetings and things like that helps kind of keep everyone on the same page. Um, and if you don't like an idea that someone comes up with, don't just say that's a bad idea. Try and like sit down and you know talk about why it might not work you might find that you, it does work and you just didn't like it because it wasn't your own idea. <laughs> um, people get really precious with ideas and I think making sure that everyone gets their say is really important. Uh, so there's certain things that really get in the way of collaboration. Um, what I find quite a lot that I uh, suffer from is a loss of focus. So this happens when you spend too much time doing react reactive work. So um, you know, when you're, you're drowning in all these new tasks that keep coming up and you just don't get enough time to do your own tasks. And that's what I was saying earlier about feeling like you haven't done anything even though you've been at work all day. Um, another big one is a lack of clarity. So that's when you set a task list and don't go through it with your team. It's one of the worst things you can do because people are like, why am I doing this? I have no idea. Like I know how to do it, but I don't know why. Um, another one's fear. That's also a pretty strong one. Uh, so it could be a fear of failure, fear of fear of you know conflict with your team. You don't want to bring something up because you're worried that they're not going to like what you have to say on it. Um, and then just a fear of having your work seen. That can get really scary around Avcon when everything's on fire. Um, and the last one is time. Like when you're in crunch again, uh, it's very easy to say I can't deal with this problem because I've got my own stuff to work on. 
and then you know decisions that need to be made in a group can fall by the wayside because everyone feels like they've got too much of their own work to do. So there's a few ways you can kind of alleviate these a bit. Um, one is trying to help each other balance that proactive and reactive time. Like maybe you could set an office time to actually, you know, all sit with headphones on and just do your own tasks, and then some time where you'll just kind of chill. Maybe you go out for drinks and discuss game ideas. I don't know, whatever works for your team. Um, another one is, yeah, keeping everyone up to date in meetings and making sure you're still making the same games. So that's kind of what I was talking about before with people, you know, thinking they're making different games can be really dangerous. Um, uh, yeah, and obviously just encouraging each other in meetings to show off work, like have some time that you're like, what's everyone been working on this week? And just throw up some work, could be some art could be like a new feature, like a GIF of something breaking, that's always fun. Um, but just, yeah, get everyone kind of showing what they've been working on so you don't kind of tunnel, get that tunnel vision of falling into a bubble of hating your own work. That's scary. Um, and lastly, uh, monitoring deadlines. So you want to keep an eye on how people are going, not like micromanaging, just being like, why isn't this done? But just check out, like if something's falling behind, be like, oh, is there anything, you know, as a team we can do to help, you know, speed that process up a bit. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, you want to make sure your team trusts each other. So, because no one knows what's best for everyone. Um, that's kind of what I was saying before about like you don't know other people's roles more than they know their own roles, unless you're a lead. But this is like a small indie team, not like a giant company. Um, so you want to make sure that you trust your team members to do their job, and they'll feel that. Like if you really trust your team, they'll give you better work. Um, and encourage your team to tackle problems on their own makes them feel like you trust them more as well. So that helps with that too. Um, and I also think uh, respecting everyone's opinions encourages people to contribute more. So that's in those meetings, you know, where someone comes up with an idea, you might not like it, but you should let it be heard and then people will come up with more and then, you know, they might, some might be bad, some might be good, you never know. So um, you do have to kind of keep this in check. You can't just have everyone contributing to everything all the time. So um, you want to really balance that. Uh, so new ideas are awesome. Like everyone loves coming up with new ideas. You're like, oh, this feature is amazing. But you have to make sure that if you're coming up with new features for your game, that they're a result of a requirement, not just you being sick of seeing the same thing for six months. Because like we've been playing Rooftop Renegade for about a year now. And we'll get really bored of it, but then we think, no, people playing the game aren't going to play it for a year straight. <laughs> I mean, they might, that'd be awesome, but probably not. Um, and then uh, you've got to make sure you keep priority list. So a lot of the time, like polish and features can come before just getting the core working. We had that recently with a play test. Um, we had like all these new mechanics we'd added in the past year and then realized like the main movement was buggy. Like the, these new features don't feel good unless the main movement's going to feel good. So we had to spend a lot of time jumping back and polishing that up. So if you can get that done first, then that's going to help. Um, yeah, and like keeping those deadlines. I think this is a really big one with indies. Is like when you don't have like a client or a publisher or anything like that breathing down your neck, it's really easy to just keep working on something forever and being like, oh, we'll spend that little extra time to keep it working uh, to get it better and better and better but sometimes you just need to set yourself cutoffs or just you know, you've been making the same game forever. Um, lastly on that, uh, always keep the product vision as the goal. Like make sure that anytime you're coming up with new ideas, they're always for what you want the core of the game to be. They always have to improve that. Like how does this benefit the game rather than just how is this a cool idea? Um, yeah, so more fun collaboration stuff. Uh, when you're working out how to communicate as a team, you really want to make sure you pick your tools early. Um, we were guilty of changing about three different chat softwares throughout our development and like task tracking software, I think we changed twice. And that takes a lot of time and everyone kind of has to get comfortable with it. So if you can really nail down the software you want to use early on, it's going to save you a lot of headache in the future. Uh, and also make sure everyone does know how to use it. So like spend that time in meetings to just sit down and be like, this is how to use the software. This is how to tick off when a task is done. Um, it sounds tedious, but it's, it's important. 
Um, and when you are using a specific software or changing to a software, make sure you show people why. Don't just say, we've changed to this because we like it better. Like, give them a reason. Give them a reason to use this software. Um, like for us, an example, source control. Uh, pretty self-explanatory, but um, making sure that everyone knew why we needed to have that going was important because it did add more time to production using source control, but it needs to be done. Um, so you've got your chat software and you start using it to make your team discussions. Uh, like when you're in a digital conversation, it's really easy to misinterpret what people are saying. Like you could get, you could get a thanks from someone and you could think it's like, is that a passive aggressive thanks? Is that a genuine thanks? Do they hate me? Are they sick of dealing with my shit? You know, you never know uh, how like people are reacting. So it's best to try and avoid that or use emojis or something. Emojis, are, they're lame, but they work. Um, unless someone thinks you're like passive aggressively smiling emoji, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, and individuals can get left behind if the conversation continues. Like if someone, you know, goes off to make dinner and you guys are chatting like a big game decision, they come back and suddenly the entire game design has changed because they made dinner and didn't have a chance to join this conversation. Um, and also, they just want to make dinner. Like, time and place and boundaries are important with your team. Like, you don't want to have to be dealing with these kind of decisions while you're trying to make dinner. And the passive aggressive smiling emojis are coming back. Um, so, there's still some risks with face to face conversations as well. Like, everyone needs to be available. It's just you have to set up meetings, it takes time. Um, and unless those meetings are recorded, conversations can be easily forgotten. Like, these. Unless you're keeping really good notes or you have someone you know, recording, um, there's a lot of times where you'll be like, oh, but didn't we decide on doing this now? It's like, no, we didn't. Uh, Should have recorded it. Um, and uh, when you are in face-to-face, -face, there's a lot less time to kind of formulate your response. You can't sit there and think unless you're like staring blankly at them for about 10 minutes, which is just a bit awkward for everyone. Um, and yeah, you can get really emotional. Like when you're all in the middle of crunch and you're all discussing, you know, some of the problems you've ran into because it's crunch. Um, it's very easy to kind of get annoyed at people unnecessarily, and that's hard to control when you're in a face-to-face -face environment. So um, we try and kind of balance the way we do our decisions. So we use our digital to distribute any information. So it'll be like, you know, this is when the meeting's happening. This is a new thing that is being implemented definitely, and things like that. Um, or just notifying people of what's going on, like had a meeting with this guy, it went well, we'll talk about it on Friday. Friday is when we have our team meetings. Um, so we save any large decision making uh, situations for those like Friday face to face meetings. Um, but we try to keep everyone like aware of what we're going to talk about during the week. So if something does come up, we'll say, you know, send a message in the chat just being like, hey, we're going to talk about this Friday. And it seems to work for us. Uh, all right, so disagreements happen all the time. We're like our teams are four really passionate game developers that all really like being right. Um, <laughs> it's great, but uh, we have to have some you know things in place to keep that in check. So, firstly, we want to make sure we always listen to all sides of a discussion. So. Um, but you gotta make sure that you are respecting team roles. So there'll be an art decision. It really comes down to who's the lead in that art situation. But everyone should have their voice heard, like I was saying before. Um, and then when you have a really cool thing that you're really sticking with and everyone's disagreeing with you, take the time to think about whether it's actually best for the game or if you just really want it in because it's your idea and you know you love your idea like it's your baby. Um, and then, like, even if you have to shoot down someone's idea in that situation, like, make sure they still feel like that was useful. Because if someone comes up with an idea and you have to counter it, that's like you having to justify some decisions in your game, and having an answer for that is, is useful. Like, if you can't justify why something wouldn't work, then maybe give it a try. Um, and then if someone in the meeting is just quiet, like, ask them how they're going if they want to, like, contribute at all because um, I think that happens to us like we'll get two people kind of really going at it in an argument and then the other two members will just go quiet because they don't want to get caught up in this so we have to be like oh what do you guys think about this decision like do you guys have any preferences um, and that just helps people feel valued 
again. Uh, yeah, so um, another thing that's important is handling internal feedback. So if there are um, issues that arise like with production, um, it's very easy to try and find a solution before identifying what the problem actually is. I think we've had one where someone was saying, oh, the character is, is just too slow. And that was what they were saying. So the first um, solution was, oh, the character needs a speed increase. But it turned out that the level they were playing just needed some more boost, boost tanks in it. Like, there just wasn't enough movement in the level. But if you go straight to finding the solution before identifying the problem, you can miss that. And just increase the base speed and then just break every level in the game, which no one wants. Um, and then once you have identified a problem like that, like leave it to whoever should solve it to try and find the solution. Like obviously everyone contributes, but once again, you go to the leads. So if it's an art issue, if something's too hard to notice, you just say, I find this too hard to notice. And then you let the artist kind of work out a solution for that issue rather than, you know, trying to do their job. Um, so yeah, so our team, like specifically, a lot of people say don't work with friends. I've heard that so many times and like, I don't agree with that. I think any, you can work with anyone. Like you should be friends with the people you work with. Um, but in an indie environment, it can get a bit messy when you go from friends to being colleagues. Um, so there's a few things I would recommend kind of locking down early. One is making sure that the business comes first. Like anytime you're making decisions or talking through anything like, you gotta do it for the business, not just cause you're mates. You don't use people's ideas cause you like them use the ideas because they're good for the game. Um, and if you're working with uh, friends and also people that aren't your friends, try to avoid playing favorites in the office with decisions. Like sometimes you'll just agree with your friend because you have a similar mindset, but you've got to make sure that that is justified and not just because we're friends, we're going to agree and everyone else can get stuffed. Uh, and sometimes uh, uncomfortable discussions need to happen. Like this happened to us a few times. Like I said, we went from a team of nine to a team of four. And there's a lot of conversations and like we, we came out of it pretty well. We're still friends with everyone that we worked with. But there were some times when we had to sit down and say, look, you know, we might not be working well together in this company. And that just may need to happen, but you, know, you gotta just brace it. Um, and at the end of the day, if your friends care about the career, they'll get past arguments that benefit the business. So if you are putting your business above your friends, at the end of the day, if they're interested in the business, they'll get past it and you'll still be friends. Um, and then to, to end on that, <laughs> a bit better, a bit higher note, uh, your team is, is like a family. It really is like you work with them for a long time if all goes well. Like if your indie team is successful, these are people you're going to be working with hopefully forever. I mean, until you'll retire or until you have a multi-billion dollar company and you'll move to different offices around the world, who knows? Um, You'll fight with your team, you'll disagree, but you know, at the end of the day, just that's just work. Like keep it at work and you don't don't hate on each other outside of the office for you know decisions that people disagree with in the office. Um, and take some time to just spend with your team, like going out for coffee, games, movies, dinner, whatever like everyone can do. You don't have to have the same interests, just whatever you can all do together. Um, just try and do it. It 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 helps your brand as a whole, I think. It's like one thing is um, we really try and show that like our team, we're all like friends and we vibe off that in our social media. And I think it's important. Uh, and yeah, just have fun. You know, we're all like this industry requires passion. Like you have to really enjoy what you're doing. So um, hopefully there's some stuff in here that will help that. I know it's a bit dry, but I think it's something that these kind of things aren't things that are talked about enough. And yeah. That's my talk. Thanks. Uh, any questions at all? Comments? Oh. That's good. Thanks very much, Patrick. Um, you mentioned task software, chat software, and source control that you've experimented with and ended up with different ones. What do you use at the moment? We're using uh, Hack and Plan for our like task management. Yep. So we went from Trello. Um, but it just didn't have enough features for us yeah. at the time. Um, we didn't really give it enough time to really get used to it, but I think we just liked Hack and Plan better. 
so we went for that. Uh, for chat, we're just using Discord now. Yeah. Um, we went through Slack, I think. Yeah. Did we try another one? Yeah. Can't remember now. No. <laughs> We got on Facebook real quick. Oh yeah, yeah. That that's a big one. Like, don't don't do your your work stuff on Facebook if you can avoid it, because it just it gets really messy, and you don't like that little scene thing. Like, because sometimes you you don't want to like check a message, but you look at it anyway, and then people are just thinking you don't want to reply to them, and that's drives me crazy. Um, and for source control, we use Perforce because it's integrated oh, in UE4. Yes. Have you tried using Collaborate? No, I haven't. I don't have any Unity experience. Anyone else? Oscar. Um, I think I'm sort of yeah, curious in the, the balancing of the proactive and the reactive time. I know it's just you know, it whatever works for you, but uh, what has worked for your team sort of getting that? Like, is that something that's sort of in your schedule or in your calendar? Like, do you know how much you'll spend on a day reacting and how much time you spend proacting, or is it just sort of it, it, uh, it varies a bit with our team because um, I'm in, you know, say more than say Alex. So I spend, I usually spend the early half of the week more reactive and uh, sorry more proactive spending you know time just getting all my tasks out of the way so that way Thursday and Friday we can kind of collaborate a bit more when everyone's in the office so um, yeah I mean I try to keep it a 50 50 balance if, if you found yourself still doing reactive tasks but you're like long halfway through the day now would you go well now it's time for some proactive stuff or, I mean depending on the severity of the situation but is I, I try to <laughs> If I, if I can put it off, then I'll try and put it off because uh, both reactive and proactive can sometimes be fun and sometimes be a nightmare. So depends, you know, what you're, what you're doing. But whatever makes you comfortable is always the answer. Anyone else? Nope. Just talk oh. about language. Cheers. <laughs> it's a bit dry. Uh, uh, do all of this earlier. <laughs> um, I think a big one, what I've got here on this last slide is just the GDC and GCAP talks are just so incredibly valuable. Um, I can't stress that enough because most of what I've said has just come from other talks that I've kind of learned and then like sneakily integrated into the way the team works. I've still got some secrets, but <laughs> um, mostly, yeah, it's just all that kind of stuff is just so helpful. And that's, that's proactive time, right? Watching talks. <laughs> hmm. All right. Uh, thank you very much, then.